Welcome to the Rick Bork Channel, where the beer's always cold, language fucking sucks, my shit's always broken, and your opinion doesn't matter. Borkfest 2022 is July 29th and 30th, so come on over and have a beer and have a good time, and you can regret yourself later. Ah! What are you doing now there, Rick? Well, fixing the fucking uh, sunken float. We got we got we got a sinker, not a floater. So we uh, working on this John Deere, and damn uh, thing kept flooding. I was like, what the hell? Well, float's cracked on it, so drill a hole in it to get the damn fuel out. And granted, it took a little bit to fill the damn thing up with fuel. Then the float sank. Then it filled everything up with fucking fuel, so. Uh. I gotta roll the engine over yet and see if the... This side I pulled the spark plug out of. We'll pull the spark plug out of the other side and see if it's got fuel in it. Uh. I hope not. But if it does, we're going to change oil on the damn thing anyway, and all that other stuff, so. Oh, it'll be good, it'll be good. Well, we got to get the fuel out of this thing so we can actually solder it. It's going to make it kind of hard to solder if you turn it into a tiny little fucking bomb. It'll be like a firecracker. Pow! Um... So chances are what we're going to do is drill another hole up here on the top and then we can throw some air through it and blow it out and all that happy shit. So you can see the crack in it if I get you in there to see the crack in it. But if you look, see where the gas starts weeping back in? There, you, you can see it. And it's actually cracked all the way through the center. Um, right by that. See, there is there the hole they had in it before. For venting. And then you just solder the hole shut. But yeah, it's cracked all the way through. We got most of the fuel out of it, so that's good. Um, yeah. So we got this thing cleaned out, and we'll show you how to solder it. All right, so we took the float. I drilled the second hole, 180 away from the other one, and we filled this thing completely full of water. And that, that way it gets rid of all the uh, flammable fuel that's in it. And we don't have to worry about the flam being, it being flammable and wanting to pop. The last thing I want to do is throw a flame to this thing and it goes POW! And it splits the whole thing open and then you're fucked. And we don't have any more uh... We're trying to bang out a new fucking float bowl so... You'll hear the water in there, just like it was with gas. And all it takes is you get that end full and that thing sinks, you're fucked. So. So I take the blowgun, go in your top uh, port. Now we can run some water through it, and some air through it. I don't want to put the air gun directly over the nozzle. Because the volume and the pressure won't be able to come out of that hole fast enough, you'll actually pop this thing. What I want 
want to see is when I shake it and we don't get any more moisture coming out that, that hole. Okay, so you can kind of see that crack in there now, right there. That line, that's the crack. It carries over. Um, here we go over here. Because, well, the bench, uh, welding table is semi cleaned off. I learned I got to put that oil away. I got to clean that shit up over there, so. Um,. We're using our little fucking uh, cortisol. It's a soldering iron torch, shrink tube, heat gun, all that stuff. You can do it all. But so this has got the heat tip end on it. I gotta get the uh, torch tip end. So I'll bring it back here in a second. One paying attention to which end is on. Fuck secret. Clean your shit up around here, would ya? For, for to fuck. For to fuck's sake. For to fuck's sake. comes with a variety of tips you can do shrink tube you can do it actually has a hot knife in it and then a couple of different soldering tips for soldering wires and stuff we're doing an open flame solder here so and this is your heating tip that works with your shrink tube or without without the with the little shield for doing shrink tube that's your direct flame tip Come on, get through there. Get in the hole. Get in the hole. How about now? Got it. That. On there like that. It's got the little kickstand, so when you... Yeah, that. Um, okay. So because we cleaned this thing out with water, it should be good to go. But you still want to, uh, so you turn your gas on over here. That goes on. You still want to get real, let her think about it. If there's any fuel vapor in there, it would have went pop. Or it would have went woof. One of the two, so. We should be good. Um, we got some small gauge solder here because it's going to melt easier. You see that going on there? So I'll make sure we heat our uh, suck that right into that crack there. We gotta watch our weight here too. So we're probably gonna have to file that back off on the surface there. Then here. We're going to go ahead and close this hole up. No, we're not going to close that hole yet. Don't close the hole yet, Rick. That's hot. We need some pliers. Pliers, pliers, pliers. Pliers, pliers, pliers. Pliers, pliers, pliers. Got 
big splash, splash, splash. Okay. Now, we can set this thing like so. We can solder the rest of the way through that the middle there. So again, turn that on. Hit your igniter. Woohoo! I did run a little flux on this. We, uh... Hit it with a little uh, flux after we so that's probably a little excessive on the solder there I'd rather be a little excessive like I said we can we can shave that off of the file so now we'll go ahead and uh, close this hole here, this little vent hole. Give that one. See how it's bubbling or popping like that? The air coming back out of that. So as everything cools down, it should seal up, and we'll find out. I'll show you how to leak test it here after we clean it up, let it cool down, and we'll clean it up here. So here's going to be the... The fine line between how much material do you take off and how much do you leave behind for the patch. So I uh, we don't need it to be as high as it is there. That, that profile, you don't need that much material there. The uh, brass itself isn't that thick so I would say something in that neighborhood see the nice little patch there but we're not adding a lot of weight also the solder it's gonna fill up your brush pretty quick or your file pretty fast you're gonna need a wire brush to clear that out I should have grabbed one but I did so we'll get a hold of one of them Otherwise, it won't take you long, and you'll be like, wow, this file doesn't work worth a shit. Well, clean your damn file out, it'll work just fine. Filled up already.
file runs diagonal, so run your brush the same way. Otherwise, it doesn't clean it out as effectively. So that's not so bad, huh? Nice little repair patch on there. This valley was something of that shape before, so we want to get some of that back. The uh, chainsaw file is going to cut pretty aggressive, and you don't want to get off to the side on this thing. Because you'll go through that brass in a hurry. Especially with a chainsaw file. Once you start, you get a groove in the middle like that, then you can start working each side of it toward the, toward the float. Again, we're just looking to make this thing a little bit lighter. Okay, leak test this thing. You got a big ass jar of water here. The taller, the better. Like a gallon pitcher, pitcher for uh, Kool Aid or lemonade or whatever. A pair of long ass needle nose pliers. And we're just gonna grab onto this thing away from where we where we soldered. We don't want to be having anything covered up there. And we're gonna submerge this thing and watch for air bubbles. The deeper you can go into the water, the more pressure it creates. And if there's any air trying to escape, you'll see it. And you can probably see better that way than through the side of the jar. That's where I always look. Give it a few minutes. Just for, just for good measure. If you start getting a little bloop, 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 you can start moving this thing around to try to figure out where it's coming from. But as of right now, that thing is dead calm. We don't have anything going on, so thinking we fixed it. Well, we'll give it a minute. I should have brought a beer over here. I wonder if I can. I need a beer. See any air bubbles? I mean, either. I think we got it. Also, another thing you can do just to kind of give yourself an idea is throw that thing in the water and see if it if it balances pretty decent. If it's listing one way to this to the side of where you uh, repaired it, you got to take some more material off. That one looks like it balances pretty well. So let's go put that son bitch on, shall we? Uh huh. All right, so I don't know how much of this you're gonna be able to see, but we have our needle there that goes into the seat, and then we have the float bowl. So we need to loop the float bowl around. I don't know how I wanna do this. Y'all are gonna be in my way here in a second. Okay, maybe. Okay. 
<laughs> it's stuck there just for a second, and that's all I needed. And then there's a pin back here that slides through. Okay, come on. Through the float, that's your hinge point. And comes out the other side there. Perfect. Nice. That should make a huge difference. So let's get the bolt put back on and see if we can actually keep fueling it this time. Okay, I got a feeling things are gonna go much nicer this time. Okay, so we got snug up. The only thing we should have to worry about is being snug on the bottom so it doesn't leak out of that washer down there. That should be it. Um, we're gonna turn our fuel valve back on. And then, we're gonna see got fuel there so that's good let's wait a few minutes here and see if we uh it's my light out of there blinding me see if we get any more fuel leaks here because And while we're while we're waiting for uh, confirmation on the fuel there we want to go ahead and check these spark plugs to make sure these cylinders aren't full of water and we're gonna go ahead and drop the oil on it now because I was gonna wait to test fire it first but we're gonna go ahead and do it right now um, No fuel in that cylinder, it's completely dry. So that's a good sign. Um, but I'll check the other side as well. That one is full of gas, so that's why we check, because otherwise this cylinder hydro locks, and that's not a good thing. So that valve was open, would have caused us a problem. So we're gonna go ahead and do is take, because we got the spark plug out, I'll pull the other one on the other side, and then we'll whip this motor over to blow that fuel out. We want to put our spark plug wires back away so we don't get an ignition and create a flamethrower. You'll probably see some pretty good fuel fly out that side, I'm guessing. Like that. <laughs> Perhaps I should have put a 
towel over it, huh? Wow. That was a little larger amount than I expected. She had a pretty good load in her. That definitely would have been hydrolocked. That'll burn good. Spark plugs back in. Plug wire back on. Cap bolted back over the top. And repeat on the other side. So we're dropping the oil. Because, well, it's got gas in it. That's just a check plug. Huh. All right, so that's probably enough dicking around in this video on trying to get this son of a bitch running well. It's an old tractor. They're gonna have problems. It's been sitting for a hot minute. We're gonna have to go through some things, so stick around. If you guys like what I'm doing, throw me a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't, ring the bell, get my notifications, memberships are down there if you want one, and I do appreciate it because it helps us do this shit on a channel. Hey, we'll fucking see you on the next one.